Most people find it difficult to find love because they often ignore the foundation of a long-lasting relationship. So let me explain with a story. It was Saturday, April 10th, 2013. Ivana, a 36-year-old Romanian lady, was scrolling through Facebook when she saw a picture of her boyfriend, Horatio, and another lady. Come and see. Come, come, come. Ivana said to Isabella, her friend. I know Harashi was cheating. I knew. From the very beginning, I knew he would cheat. Ivana started crying. But wait, Isabella said. It seems this picture was taken at the office. She suggested looking at the picture. And so what? Ivana angrily asked. I mean, the lady might just be one of his colleagues. Isabella didn't want her to take it too seriously. No, no, no. I can't accept your foolish explanation, Isabella. Ivana snatched the phone from her as she continued crying. I'll kill her. Any woman who wants to snatch my man from me will die. Ivana took her handgun and angrily left the house. She planned to drive to Harashu's house, hoping she would meet this lady there. But while on her way, she remembered something. What if Horashu isn't at home? She asked herself. Okay, I'll call him. She said as she looked for a parking space. Three months ago, Ivona had downloaded a geolocation app and secretly connected her phone with that of Horashu. With this app, Ivona can track her boyfriend's whereabouts at any time. She had even hired Flavio, her man's friend, to monitor and report any suspicious activities to her. Now she needed to make a call for this app to show her Horashu's location. Sweet Ivana, Horashu answered his phone. Hey, fine man. Just calling to know how you're doing, Ivana said. After a few needless small talks, Ivana ended the call to check the location of her man. To her surprise, Horashu was in a hotel, Grigor Hotel. I said it, she spoke out to herself. I know this man is a cheat. I know, I know, I know. She started crying again. If Horashi is in a hotel, he must be with that lady she saw on Facebook or another woman. Looking at the handgun beside her, Ivana told herself, No woman will take my man. No, no, no. Driving at 70 km per hour where she's supposed to drive 50, Ivana went straight to the receptionist at the Grigo Hotel. I am here to see Alex Horashi. Can you please tell me his room number? Ivana asked. She's supposed to know that it's against the law for any hotel to reveal the room number of their guest, but she's too emotional to think now. So, even after the receptionist politely explained to her, Ivana still wished there could be a way to bump into her boyfriend's hotel room. After 15 minutes of persuading the receptionist to do what she knows wasn't impossible, Ivana remembered she could do something else. She would call Horashu and shock him with the fact that she had caught him in the hotel. Hello, sweet babe, Horashu answered. Don't sweet babe me. I am at Grigo Hotel right now and I can see you when you entered with that woman. Surprised, Horashu asked, which woman? And by the way, how did you know I am at Grigor? Don't ask me how I know you're a cheat. Tell me your room number now, Ivana commanded. Okay, okay, ask anyone you're going to the seventh floor, Horashu said, still surprised. Which room on the seventh floor, Ivana asked. Room 103. Harashi said, knowing that there was no 103 on the 7th floor. By now, Ivana was boiling. There is no doubt her man is a cheat or else, what can he be doing in a hotel with a woman? Looking again at her bag where she had kept the handgun, Ivana opened the door to the 7th floor. To her amazement, the 7th floor at the Grigo Hotel is in for hotel rooms. What she's seen here are expensive wines and just when she's trying to get her head around what's going on here, she spotted Horashu coming in her direction with a young lady. Since a few things have confused her on the seventh floor, using her handgun doesn't seem to be the right thing now, but Ivana is still ready to fight. This is Rebecca, my stepsister I told you was coming to Costanta, Horashu said. Shocked, Ivana remembered Horashu told her about Rebecca. He had told her she was coming to work in a wine store. In fact, the picture she had seen on Facebook was that of this lady, except she looked different than any of the pictures she had seen before. But you called me a cheat, Horashu angrily asked. Not wanting to cause a scene in front of his sister, he calmed himself down until he had private time with Ivona later in the day. The news he had for Ivona was very simple. It's over between them.
He had suffered various emotional trauma from this relationship over the last two and a half years and it's time to have some peace. Ivana started crying as she began to think about her past relationships. When she met Dumitru 14 years ago, she had to run hard after him, acting clingy and needy, thinking he was the best and only man in the world, even though Dumitru didn't seem to care that much about her. When she started a relationship with Alexandru in 2002, she had been obsessed with how she looked wearing makeup every hour of the day and buying every piece of cloth she thought might make Alexandru see her as beautiful. She even contemplated breast enhancement surgery before Alexandru broke up with her in November of 2003. Her journey with Claudio started in 2004 at a party before she knew that Claudio was a party man. He in fact attended parties two times every week. Ivana, of course, hates weekly parties but she was afraid that Claudio might leave her or meet other women if she doesn't go to every party with him so she did until her health was in danger. Not able to follow Claudio to every party anymore, she became insecure, fearful that other women at the parties will take her man. Her unhealthy jealousy and insecurity ended that relationship in June of 2008. Her relationships with Christian, Dorin, Gavriel and other men all followed a similar pattern. Ivana always felt that she needs to run after the opposite sex, hold them tight to her chest and keep them from sleeping away. She feels she's not beautiful enough, not good enough and not worthy of the other person's adoration. While many of Ivana's symptoms cannot be easily named, her problem is simple. Lack of self-love. You see, as much as we want to be loved by the other person, as much as we believe in a soulmate, as much as we hope there's someone out there who could cherish, accept and love us with all their heart, the surest way to get such a person is for us to love ourselves first. To find lasting love, you must love yourself first. The absence of love reveals itself in numerous ways. For example, a lot of people think that they are not beautiful enough, not good enough or not deserving to be loved. Many women see other women as their competitors for the love that they want just as many men see other men as their competitors. Many people act clingy and needy, try too hard to hold on to the person who doesn't care that much about them. This makes them become the victim of the law of least interest as I discussed in a video you'll find at the end of this video. Some people accept their partner to treat them badly in fear they can't find better love out there. Some are too sensitive, some strive very hard to always look perfect and many apologize for everything. While low self-esteem has many other symptoms, the result is always the same. What we project into the world is what we get in return. You can only attract according to the frequency that you're operating on. People who love themselves are attracted to a partner who loves himself or herself. Well, when you think you put you onto a frequency, you can only attract what's on that frequency. Mm -hmm. Show me a relationship in which two people involved have healthy self-esteem and that might be a relationship that lasts forever. The reason is simple. People who love themselves are easy to deal with. They cause less drama, need less attention and they know how to love others. According to this 2006 study of 500 men and women by the Journal of Personality and Social Psychology, people with healthy self-esteem are more likely to accept and love their partner than people with low self-esteem. This 2013 study found that people who have low self-esteem also have low satisfaction in relationships. The reason for the above two findings is simple. It is difficult, if not impossible, to love others, except we first love ourselves. It is also difficult to attract the right person, the person who will love us genuinely, except we first love ourselves. For example, several studies have found that people with low self-esteem feel unhappy and unsatisfied with life than people with high self-esteem. People with low self-esteem get angry easily and more often. People who don't like themselves show more passive-aggressive and active-aggressive behaviors. In fact, Low self-esteem makes you experience stress or even sickness more often. All of these make it difficult for you to either attract true love or keep such love if it comes your way. Generally speaking, people who don't like themselves are difficult to live with or be with in a relationship. These people cause too many dramas, get angry about little things, want too much attention and take things too personal. I mean, nobody wants to deal with such people for a long time.
In the year 1926, George S. Klassen published his finance masterpiece, The Richest Man in Babylon. And the most important advice in that book is, pay yourself first. When it comes to love and relationship with others, the best advice is, love yourself first. Loving yourself makes you happier, more confident, less irritable, and easier to deal with, hence you become more attractive. The law of attraction also suggests that you will attract the other person who is like you and that's how to find long-lasting love. I make this video on your screen to show you how to deal with a situation whereby the person you love doesn't love you back. In this video, I talked about the law of least interest and how to use it to your advantage in any relationship. Click the video on your screen now and see you inside. Thanks.